everybody welcome to my workroom on a Monday evening at 7 p.m and guess what we're doing yes we're making it Monday as we always do every Monday at seven o'clock well for the last couple of months anyway we're now on project 16 I was going to say week 16 but it's not quite right because we're a bit of a gap over Christmas but we're on project 16 which is our crazy carrot I know uh, I should have perhaps come up with a more Easter-like sort of title, but actually <laughs> I thought Crazy Carrot was absolutely fine. Um, oh, I can see you're all joining me. I've got comments on my screen. How lovely. I've never seen that before. So we can say hello to Linda, Elaine, Sue, Jackie and Jane, Rosemary and Janet and hello to all of you. Obviously, I'm not going to say all your names because there's going to be loads. I have to say, this today, this morning when I said, who's joining me at 7pm, there was 53 yays! And oh my goodness me, all the, all the comments are coming up on my screen. How exciting. Uh, that's lovely to see. An evening to every single person that's watching. It's just so lovely. And... Uh, <laughs> I've got Abigail on there as well. I suspect Adrienne, perhaps if her little one is in bed. So it's lovely that I can see you all on my screen because now I can see your comments as well as do my sewing, which is lovely. And then you can keep me company. Uh, and it's so lovely to see everybody saying hello to me and hello to everyone, of course, because today is Project 16, the crazy carrot. <laughs> I'm sorry I laugh at my own jokes I didn't know what else to call it and because it is a carrot and it's meant to be for Easter obviously um, and it is a bit crazy so I suppose the two went together fine and uh, I did get a little word of warning about the rabbit to be very careful that it's only the single rabbit and at the moment we've only got the one so it all, all is good with the world so thank you very much for uh, to to John for setting me up this evening. We're on a new uh, new sort of software here, and it seems to be working so far. I just needed to get rid of Millie the dog. Well, when I say get rid of, you know I mean that in the nicest possible way. But she was sitting just down here, right where my feet should go, <laughs> and she wasn't going to move. So we had to entice her out. So that's why I was a few seconds late. So never mind. So. Making it Monday, Project 16 is our crazy carrot. And of course it is, I said to you, we're gonna have a couple of weeks of Easter themed things, just in case you wanted to make some for your children, grandchildren, the next door neighbors, your dog, your cat, your guinea pig, rabbit. Um, if you wanted to make some treats, obviously we need a couple of weeks notice. So it's great that, um, we, you know, that, uh, that we kind of can get together because it's about a month, isn't it? Is it about the 4th of April? Something like that. I think it's about a month away. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it. Of course, we will we'll be uh, scoffing chocolate. Well, actually, I have to be honest, I've been scoffing chocolate since my birthday. I had the most enormous bar of chocolate given to me um, by John with four massive bags of Percy Pigs, my favourite. Now, if you're not in the UK and you're wondering what Percy pigs are, you are so unlucky that you can't get them in the US because they're made by Marks and Spencers. And no, I'm not getting paid to advertise them, but I got four big packets, which I've only uh, gone through one packet so far, but nearly all the chocolate's gone. So I kind of feel I should have like an interim bar of chocolate before Easter. What do you reckon? Answers on a postcard, please. Because if you say I should, then I should. I can only do your bidding. <laughs> anyway, crazy carrot. So I've got a side camera this evening, so we'll see all these in these in big detail. And again, oh, it's the fourth. Oh, fourth is Good Friday. So is it sixth? <laughs> sixth of April. Perhaps it is Easter Sunday. I don't know. Crikey, I, I don't even know what today is. Never mind uh, Easter. So um, yeah, so we're going to make this this evening. Got the side camera set up. I think I'm a little bit zoomed in because I can see it on the side there. So we'll see how we get on when we start. So obviously I want to bring the machine in so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to make another version of that. But before we do that, um, I said to you in the pattern, uh, somewhere at the back, I think, it says, quote, 
This could be made into a cone for bridesmaids. Just make the top straight across instead of leaves. Use lacy fabric and fill with confetti. So I've written that on the pattern and then I thought I really should show you my version of that. So it's in white sparkly fabric and you see it, I suppose it's still a little bit carrot shaped. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of inevitable but um, I've made it with white sparkly fabric perhaps we'll see it on the side camera a little bit later and I've made the top so I've just squared it off so you know when you cut your your leaves just just cut straight across follow the same process um, if you want to you could put that top edge on the fold so you have one piece that's I'll leave that for you to decide um, and then once it was finished, I put a little bit of lace around the top, which is gorgeous, and a white ribbon. And I think, do you know what? That could be carried because it's quite a nice size and it um, could be filled with confetti or rose petals. Um, and that could be carried by a bridesmaid. It was just something off the top of my head. And then I thought, you know what, I better show you what I, what I had in my head so you could make some sense of it. So there's lots of other things you can do with crazy carrots. So I'll sh show you that on the side view in just a little while. So in the pattern, as you know, with Making It Monday, the patterns are really much more basic than my regular patterns. Um, there's not so many photographs, there's not so much instruction because we have this video to help you uh, put, sort of make the projects. And I'd like to think that some of you will stitch along with me because it doesn't take too long to put one together. One of the things we're doing with our crazy carrot is that we're putting a tiny, tiny piece of elastic in and that will be one of the new sort of techniques you could try if you've never done that before. If you've done putting elastic in, if you know how that works and what you need to do, great. I would expect to see a lot of crazy carrots over the next week or two um, and it'd be fun to see them. You don't have to do the elastic, but it kind of just naturally draws the whole thing in rather than if you put a ribbon round, that's going to gather it in. But I was thinking of children and babies and I really, really wanted you to have the choice of whether you put the ribbon on or not. And if you don't use the ribbon, the elastic will always gather that in anyway. And it, then it becomes very safe, doesn't it? So there we are. So like I always say, on a Making It Monday project, um, obviously you've always got that front page. It tells you what the project is, but I wouldn't bother printing it because it's like as I always say, it's ink heavy. So just start printing from that page there, which is obviously page number one. In your pattern, when you go to print it, it's page two. OK, so you want to print two to, I think, could, be, could it be six? I don't know, I haven't counted, but to the end page anyway that's where the pattern pieces are um so yeah so it, it's, it's kind of like a repeat on the second page of what the project is what number it is in case you want to file it away and then a nice picture of what you're going to be making with the little rabbit there so far just the one um so we'll kind of follow the pattern through as we as we go along and then if you are following with me then you'll be able to um, follow the pattern and follow me and hopefully it will make some sort of sense okay so like I say, Making It Monday is all about keeping them simple, keeping them doable and achievable and making sure that you can enjoy this as much as I do, because I really do enjoy it. So technology allowing, sorry, I was told not to talk about technology. I'm going to switch to the side now. So hopefully you'll see me um, on the side camera. We'll give you a little wave here. I might just just come out a wee bit and let's just hope I don't go in because I do have the habit of Oh, that's not bad. Let's just come in a little bit there. And I can bring my machine in a little bit more so you can see. I'll get rid of the, the mouse. You don't need to see that. There's enough with rabbits. So there we are. Here we go. Here are the pattern pieces. So I've got two pieces of elastic, quarter inch uh, white elastic, you can have black if you like, um, and they're two inches long. Okay, so they're tiny little pieces, but if you follow what I'm going to tell you, you won't have any trouble putting those into your project. Okay, then we have four pieces of carrot top, so carrot leaf. Okay, um, it says on the pattern to cut four, so there's nothing left to chance. Okay, you can see that. And I've chosen some sort of very sort of bright green spotty fabric for the for the leaf this time. And obviously you could think Easter. 
with the green and the well sorry traditional with the green and the orange um carrot or you could go really wacky i think it would be lovely to go a little bit wacky with these depending who it's for i suppose so we need two of those for the inside two of these for the outside so let's just get that like that so those are the the two there two pairs and then you need a couple of bodies a, a couple of carrot bodies there we go let's get the pattern pieces out of the way and of course we need a little bit of ribbon and I think that's going to look gorgeous don't you so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch a carrot top top carrot top <laughs> to the carrot base okay so right sides together you're just going to flip those over quarter inch seam allowance there you go and you're just going to it looks like a christmas stocking now um, and you're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way along there okay put your um stitch length on just keep it as you switch your machine on which is usually 2.4 or 2.5 but uh you don't need to go you don't need to go large so let's pop it under the machine Check your bobbin, make sure you've got enough uh, thread to see you through the project. And uh, away we go. So, oh, switch your machine on. That always helps. So a little back stitch just to make sure you secure those pieces. And you're just stitching along that seam there. And while we've got the needle ready for action, we will stitch the next pair together. So we've got the back and we've got the front. And we're going to stitch them together. I must, I must say, this fabric looks gorgeous on screen. Um, little back stitch. Let's just try to remember to do that because it secures our thread. And then again on the start, um, not compulsory, but it's handy. Um, and just do one or two stitches. There's no need to do any more than one or two stitches when you do a back stitch. Okay, so let's find a pair of scissors and snip those two like that. So that's our first pair done. And what I say to you is, and this is really important with anything that you stitch, press in between. Um, you'll get such a great result if you press, if you iron, dry iron, there's no need to go mad with a, with a steam iron. That's a little overkill, but um, you need to, to iron at every stage, okay? So I do it so the seam is going up. So if I pull that back and you can set that seam if you want, but we're not doing patchwork. Um, and then I just flip that top over like that and then we'll give it a, a nice press. There we go. Super. I love those colours together. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> really lovely. Now you might think that um, putting the elastic in now would be a good idea because you've got no other pieces to get in your way but actually um, it's much much easier if you do it once you stitch the other pieces together. Uh, uh, trust me, um, I've thought it through. So those are our two pieces so hopefully you've got two pieces that look like that two carrots and then if we look at the instructions and i'll bring that in if you look at the instructions we've done we've got to there so the next stage is this where we're folding over just one quarter inch so you're not folding over and folding over again you're just folding over once and then you're just going to top stitch all the way across those straight bottoms. So we'll do that and I'll move on to page two. Now, while you're there, let me show you my other version because there it is. It's in sparkly white fabric and it has this gorgeous, gorgeous cotton lace top to it. It's almost like a stocking top, isn't it? And then underneath or through there, you'll see I've stuffed it with stuffing just to keep it um, puffed out for you. And I haven't hand stitched. My goodness me, I don't have the time. But you do. You hand stitch just to finish that all off. And you can see how pretty that looks in some gorgeous glittery fabric or just keep it traditional uh, just for this Easter and create it with your fabulous um, carrot leaf tops and, and a gorgeous ribbon to match. And if you do put some um, stuffing in here, be careful who you're giving this to, then just dint it in the sides to make it look a little bit more like a carrot. I think that would be good fun. <coughs> excuse me excuse me so on these two extra pieces here we're going to turn these over a quarter of an inch and we're going to top stitch so hopefully 
You've got all your pieces there and this is what you're doing along with me. Now we're not going to back stitch that because that little piece there is doesn't it's not going to come under any strain whatsoever. So just top stitch all the way along. And as we've got it there with the needle ready to go, we'll top stitch the other one. So let's do that. Just follow that across. There you go. Now if you can't see, please say because I can move the machine over a little bit. I just needed a tiny little space for my my ironing mat. Okay. And this is a wool ironing mat and I do recommend if you can to get a wool ironing mat because it reflects the heat which means that um, even with a medium uh, sort of setting on your iron it really does make a super job of ironing your pieces. It's they're so crispy and you know I love a crispy bit of ironing. I'm going to move that out of the way for the time being now. Okay. So if you're looking at the pictures, you'll see that we're going to, let's take one pair away. We're going to do right sides together. So let me turn it so you can see, see my carrot. So there's my right side. There's the right side of my carrot top. And we're going to put right sides together. And what I'll do is, because it's always handy if we have a visual on this, um, I want you just to stitch across the top. Okay, so let me just um, draw that in so you can see what it looks like. Um, I don't get any marks out of 10 for drawing, okay? <laughs> it's not necessarily my forte. I don't mind digital drawing, but there we go. And hopefully you'll see the lines. And that's just as a guide so you know where you're stitching. So if I bring that up to the screen, you can see that dotted line and that's where we're going to stitch. OK, and we're going to do both of them. So pop them under your machine again. So hopefully you can see OK. And we're just going to do a little back stitch. Not much. Just one stitch is fine. Try and keep to a quarter inch seam allowance, but I do appreciate that it's um, you, you know you've got curves there you've got the points to think about um, so just take your time um, and if you go off pieced a little bit don't please don't worry this is only a carrot okay <laughs> unless you're going to make a really posh one <laughs> and if you're making one perhaps in the the gorgeous glitter fabric but then we didn't do the leaves, did we? We just did straight across. So there we are. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see. So we've stitched all the way across here now. And like I say, if you're making the bridesmaid one, let's say, all you're going to do is cut uh, another rectangle. So it's going to go straight across. So you're just cutting straight across like that. And, and, and you could sort of splay it out a little bit. You'd get a little bit more of a ruffle. That would be nice. So I'll pop that to, just down there for the moment and then we'll do the other one. So I, I won't draw on this one uh, because you've seen and if you've forgotten what I did or you missed that bit because you were looking at the TV or your husband was giving you a cup of tea or your wife was giving you a beer, um, then you can watch this back at any time. And of course it is now on YouTube or will be probably tomorrow at the latest. And the other thing is these little short videos for Making It Mondays are now on my website, lizzycurtis.com, and they're under video tutorials and they're called MIM videos. Okay, so you've just got to look for that and you'll see all of the ones that we've done so far. Um, and I thought that would be easier for you to find them there than trying to find them on my Facebook page. So, Again, I've just stitched around that. You can hardly see, well, you won't be able to see my stitching. So now we have to trim into this. Now we've got to trim into these V's here, okay? The, the two V's either side, there and there. And obviously you've got to be really careful about your stitches there. And I also suggest you take some of this fabric away. So let me do it and then I'll show you. So we're going to snip into the, the V's. So we'll just snip in like that not too far, I'm about a millimetre away. This is just a carrot. You can't get too excited about the accuracy here. And then I'm just trimming some of that fabric away. So I'll do it, then I'll show you. 
So just trim and trim. So I can't give you an ex uh, a measurement here. You just got to use your imagination. There we go. Let's brush those away. So let's let's see if we can. Can you see that? So I've snipped into the V's and I've trimmed some of those fabrics away. There we go. And we do the same for the other side. So just snip into your V's. So you're about a millimetre away, perhaps a little bit more. You can always go back and take some more off if they don't turn through really nicely. And then trim some of that fabric away. And the same on the other side. Whoops, I've got very blunt scissors. I think it's just a little section of them that are blunt. I have to get my tin foil out later. Then me, me illumine, illumine, illum, yeah, that. <laughs> if you're in the US, aluminum. I'll have to get that out and give them a little sharpen. Right, so now we've uh, stitched both of the carrot tops onto the main bodies, okay? So when we look at the next bit, we're going to actually now put the elastic in. Now, like I said before, you may feel that that's, that it's, that you wanted to do it before you do this top part here, but trust me, it's better to do the top part and then put your elastic in. So these are gonna come out of the way, okay? Now you could, if you wanted to, turn these right side out now. Um, we're gonna do it afterwards. And we're actually going to stitch the elastic onto, I want to turn it that way, onto the seam. Okay, so let's just, let me hold that so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's my carrot and this is the right side with my extra little piece there. Okay, and this is the wrong side. So we've just got that seam where we joined the top to the carrot. And we're going to put that elastic on that seam allowance there okay we're gonna we're gonna stitch along there so when you look at the t <laughs> this is a bit funny really but when you look at your piece of elastic and you think what the heck how am i going to get that to fit right the tr the trick is this first of all you start stitching your elastic about and don't measure it about a quarter of an inch from the the edge there okay you don't want that edge gathered you want that to be straight because when you come to stitch all this together it's much much better if you've got a bit of a straight bit of fabric there and not gathered okay so you're going to start stitching that elastic a quarter of an inch from the edge of your carrot so what i'm going to do is i put it under the machine and then i catch that elastic with a couple of stitches and then I go back a couple of stitches and then I come forward to securely fix that elastic to that seam okay and all this other fabric is out of the way so let's do that okay now I can't move the camera to bring you in closer so you've got to trust me that this is what I'm doing is what I just told you so my elastic isn't stretched at the moment. It's just laying flat onto my seam, okay? So if I turn that, oop, there we go. If I turn that around, you can see that my underneath carrot top is out of the way and my elastic is lying flat on top of that seam going across, okay? And what I, all I want to do is I want to do a couple of stitches backwards and forwards just to really secure that elastic because the next stage is that I'm going to hold this end of the elastic and while I remember I'll get my pokey tool my, my stiletto and what you're going to do is you're going to pull that elastic over to this edge here and hold on to it until you get close to it and then you're going to use the pokey tool or you could use a seam ripper pair of scissors anything sharp to hold it in place but you're going to finish stitching the elastic again about a, a roughly quarter of an inch from the et, from that edge there okay so you're just pulling it across okay and you're going I'm going to hold it there I'm going to hold it there with my other hand as best I can I'm going to try and do it like this so you can see and it's actually sitting on top of my seam okay it's sitting on top of my carrot seam and my top seam so yeah I can't explain it any better than that and then you're just going to stitch a, stitch along okay stitch along and as you stitch 
and I'm going to go wonky because this is not a very good angle for me. Um, as you stitch, you'll find that this end, you can see it already, it curls up and it kind of curls back on you and you think, oh my gosh, what's happening? So let me try and hold this with my stiletto and I'll hold that into the fabric like that. So we hopefully we can see what I'm doing. I hope, I'm hoping you can see. And I'm holding on to that elastic. That stiletto is going all the way through my elastic and into my fabric underneath. And obviously now it's, I'm getting close. So I'm gonna let go in a minute, but I'm just holding on until the last minute. And then I'm gonna let go. Again, another couple of little stitches just to hold it, break my thread. And then because of all of that, <laughs> it's created your, your lovely stretchy stitched on little piece of elastic okay make sure you haven't stitched this other little piece now you could use zigzag really seriously you could use zigzag and actually it it really looks nice if you've done a zigzag because although on the front you can see it's, it's got a lovely gathered stitch going all the way across and it's, it's, it kind of it ruckles it with the zigzag it does that even more so you, it's actually quite nice to have a zigzag going across there so try it try it try both ways so hopefully you've got that and you can see at the edges that I've stopped well it's not quite a quarter of an inch but it's as good as and then at the beginning there is a good quarter of an inch because we're going to stitch there and I don't want that to be gathered. I want it to be straight. It just, it's just easier. So I'm going to turn the machine so it's a little bit better for me. <laughs> Get my other piece of elastic. So we're doing exactly the same again. We're sort of separating our layers of our top. There we go. You can see what it looks like. And we're just going to catch that little piece of elastic in that first bit. So you're not stretching it at the moment. All you're doing is holding it there if it wants to, if it wants to stay. There we go. And a couple of little stitches just to anchor it because you're going to pull on it really hard to bring that tiny little piece of elastic right over to here. You've got to, you've got to pull it hard. So let's just machine a little way. So there's my end. <laughs> I love elastic. It's comical. Um, then I'm going, to, I'm going to put my stiletto inside my elastic, like a, like a hook really. Like you could use a pin if you want, but I don't think they're strong enough. And I'm using my stiletto now as a tool to hold the elastic in place, okay? So we're just going to finish stitching across. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Be brave. Then we're about half an inch from the end now. So I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to let it go and give it a couple of stitches just to secure it. And we've got our second piece. Oops, there we go, let me get hold of it. Our second piece installed, okay? That's how it looks. So you've got this sort of weird thing going on now, okay? So you've got two looking like that. So the next thing is to turn them inside out. So you need a nice pokey tool. So if you've got a gorgeous chopstick then a chopstick is absolutely the right thing to do. So all we're going to do is I'll put my thumb in there and oh, in fact, you could just take the point off of those just a wee bit. Don't go mad. Just chop your carrot top off. Um, somebody's asked if there's a rule of thumb about um, how much elastic. Um, not in my world. There might well be. I suppose it depends how tight you want it to be because I wanted this to be, because it's only tiny across, I forget how much the measurement was across there, four, four and a half inches I think. Um, so I wanted a good gather uh, and, and perhaps somewhere somebody has written that down. If if you're going to put an elastic into a little girl's skirt, then take your piece of elastic and tie it loosely round her waist or his waist, if it's a trousers for a little boy or whatever, and then just, just pull it slightly until it's sitting comfortably against the skin. You don't want it tight, but you want it to, to just grab that the child or whoever it's for, for you, whoever, you just want it to grab. So, you know, if it's for a cuff, you just want it to grab. So you, what you do is, uh, look, hold on, let me just show you my heap of elastic here. Um, so if, just say for instance, this is a, a waist of a pair of trousers, 
could well be the size of them. Just measure your elastic like that. Obviously that's really, really loose. Okay, you can see that's really loose. So that's no good. You don't, that wouldn't, unless you want a sleeve, unless it's a really big sleeve that needs gathering and you, you don't want it to be tight, in which case that's perfect, okay? But if you want it to actually sit close to the skin like you would with a skirt or trousers, then what you're going to do is that you're going to just pull that elastic a little bit until, look, you can see now it's, it's moving, but it's a little bit tighter. And that's, for me, you know, what can I say? That's my rule of thumb of how I would put in elastic into a garment. Um, and you can always adjust. You need it a little bit tighter than you think. So uh, a good thing to do is to practice. And you can always undo elastic. It's just the same as anything else. You can undo it. Okay, so we've got our carrot. And I've turned through one of the little peaks. Um, the other ones are like half peaks, so mm, the, well, we're going to stitch them now so you don't have to turn them through. Here's the other one, so I'm just going to turn that through and just use my pokey tool just to make a nice little pointy carrot leaf. Sweet. And then the next bit is so easy, but I couldn't, when I wrote the instructions, I couldn't get it down into a sentence of how I wanted this to be. So this is why I put on the pattern, confused, watch the video. <laughs> so right sides together for sure. Okay, right sides together for sure. So let's let's be really good and put a couple of pins in. Ooh, I hate pins. Anyway, so do it so they the head sticks out and then as you're coming around, you can pull them out. I don't always follow my own advice, but that's what is always easiest. Um, you don't need a, a turning gap with these because obviously the, the gap is going to be at the top. So look, let's just put this side of the carrot together so you can make sense of what I'm doing. Okay, so there's my two body of the... It's probably with elastic, it's going to be all over the place. But look, there's the, the body, the two bodies right right sides together and then you've got the top bits which are have got a mind of their own so just flatten that out there's your side seam coming up okay and there's that point of your first or well, your side leaf and there is the hem of the you know where you folded up once and top stitched so there's the hem of your lining piece okay so you've got this weird sort of shape going on. Yeah, it's really hard to, for me to show you this because it's it's there's a lot going on. There's the elastic, there's the leaf. OK, so what you want to do is bring the other leaf round. Hold on. Let's do it. Let's get it sorted. And go right sides together. So here, if I come right in you've got the hem of the bottom one, the hem of the other side of the bottom one, right sides together, okay? And then you should have two leaf peaks, if you like, and they come together as well. And then you're going to stitch down your leaf. In fact, it looks better like that, look. Down your leaf all the way around and all the way up. So you're actually stitching from your hems of your inside piece all the way around to your point of your leaf, down the side of your leaf, over your elastic. Make Try and make sure your seams match. Don't worry if they don't. And then you're doing coming all the way around and going up. What do you reckon? So let's do it. So let's bring the machine in. And then perhaps you'll see a little bit closer. So that's that's really hard to explain, but it's you're going from the two hems. So you're putting the two hems right sides together and then just follow the line around. Um, so you're coming up the side seams of the leaf, if you like. I think that would that's a good ex good explanation. So your right sides together, make sure your raw edges are together. And then when you come up to that side seam, 
your needle should go into the side, the, the seam that you created on either side of the leaf. So it would be, so it's here, this is where I'm at at the moment. So there's the seam there, but I've just come up to there. So you're going to put your needle in that seam up to the point and you're going to swivel round. So now you're coming down the other side and maybe when I've stitched it, I'll show it to you again, just to make sure you've got it. Because like I said, if you thought it was confusing, that's why I said about watch the video. Now look, you know I can't abide pins so they're coming out. And if you cut your pattern beautifully, it'll lie beautifully together. So just take your time. If the camera's jiggling, I do apologise. It's my flaw. <laughs> now you can pivot and turn, pivot and turn at the bottom of that carrot if you find it easier. Again, just go slowly, no race, unless you've got 24 to make, in which case, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to the other side of the elastic now. So my two seams that have the elastic on are now going right sides together. Oh, that's a good view because that's exactly what you want to see. And those are going right sides together. And then we're going to come up to the side point like that. And then coming down to the hem like that. Once you stitch it, if you listen to the words I'm saying, and even if you have to stop and pause me next time, hopefully that'll, that'll sort of make sense. Let me just move my foot control. It's decided to slip away from me. That's it. So just going over the elastic that now where the seams are. I'm just coming up to the side seams where the point is. Um, when I get to the seam, when I get to the stitching, I'm leaving my needle down and I'm just pivoting and then I'm coming down to the other side. Here we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could line the whole carrot, but I felt it was completely unnecessary. It's a carrot that's maybe only going to be used once or twice. So I wouldn't, you know, I really wouldn't spend a lot of time on this. Um, yeah. So look, there we are. So there's, that's what it looks like. <laughs> okay. So in actual fact, while it's like this, where it's wrong sides facing you, if you like, this is a good time to bring your seam down your lining seam down and poke your points out, which I'll do in a sec, but then you can hand stitch uh, your lining to your elastic and you just want a very loose slip stitch, okay? So let's just tidy this up. So I'm cutting the fabric where the points are. Let's make sure I don't cut my th stitches. There we go. Um, trim my threads, make sure it's nice and neat. Just popping my finger in there, turning that through. Popping my finger in there, turning that through. Getting my super duper pokey tool that Jackie bought me. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, I think you've probably had the thanks every time I've done a video this year. Oh dear. It's one of those uh, presents you get and you think, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I wanted. So this is still inside out, guys. And you can see how the lining comes down quite neatly over your elastic. OK. And this is where you could just slip stitch your um, the bottom of your hem onto the bottom of the elastic. I would try and stitch it onto the elastic so you don't see your stitches on the right side of your carrot. Yeah. Um, and obviously that now needs a really jolly good press. I mean, to be honest, you don't you don't have to stitch that. You could put some uh, put some glue on it and glue it down. There's no reason why not. That would look amazing and it would probably, you know, sit quite nicely. So um, oh, the other thing is, let's just get the pinking shears, is just pink the bottom of your carrot. If you haven't got pinking shears, just trim the fabric a little bit. You don't need to go mad. And maybe one or two um, little Vs you could cut out of that just to make it neat. Sorry about the banging. 
um, and then all we're doing is turning through. So if you were to make these, they'd take you about 10 minutes. Because I'm demonstrating, they always take about 45 minutes to an hour because I do things really slowly, which might irritate the heck out of you. But you can fast forward me the next time. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Um, right, so let's give this a little press. I'll just keep you on the side camera for a moment while we do that. Um, and then you can see, uh, we can go to, to front chart. I'll put the um, ribbon on so you can see how that looks as well. And please, please, please press your carrots. <laughs> In fact, press everything that you make with a dry iron. If it needs a steam, it'll let you know because it's, it won't do as it's told. So maybe then a steam. But basically, a dry iron is absolutely super. So, Making It Monday, we have got a Facebook page dedicated to Making It Monday, and it's called Making It Monday, exclamation mark, if you want to find it on Facebook. And we're nearly up to a thousand members and it's only been going, I think, three weeks. So that's incredible. It's a, it's like a gallery, really. It's not meant for anything more than a place to show off what you do. Because I found that I, I run an online group, a sewing, a sewing group, and um, it's called the Gold Group. And a lot of the members will be watching this evening. Thank you guys for, for, for popping in, popping by. And um, all of the lovely makes, all of the lovely makes that we'd had in the last few weeks were all being posted in the Gold Group because it's an open group that anybody can post anything. And I thought, what a shame, because nobody else is seeing the makes, which are stunning. And um, those that weren't in the Gold Group weren't getting a chance to post their makes. So I thought, I know, I'll put, set up a Making It Monday Facebook page and it's the perfect place for you to show off your makes okay um it's been done deliberately as a with a gallery and i was talking to john about it and i said what i want is a gallery and we thought we thought of all sorts of different ways of, of doing that and then we thought well just a, a regular facebook group would be perfect so of course you're going to fill this with lovely chocolate eggs something like that but of course you could put a ribbon on it just to make it look super pretty and you could sort of tie that so it's a little bit tighter across the top and if we had another five minutes I'd probably stuff this so it would um, stand out a little better so you can see what it looks like but I don't think that's too bad it could do with a little bit of a sort of tug and a pull to get that to sit right <laughs> but there we are that's our second carrot made and also we've got something gorgeous for a bridesmaid as well so um there's the original one that we made and that's obviously been stuffed so it looks like a carrot and then we have the one that's possibly could be for um, a special occasion um and nobody would know that's a carrot at least <laughs> i don't think they would so let's go let's go to the front camera and have a little chat and uh, see what you've all been up to while I've been away um, I hope you enjoyed that um, I don't know if you uh, made made one along with me because certainly you know we we took our time so even if you weren't the most fastest stitcher in the world I'm sure perhaps you could have kept up with me and hopefully you've made a few um, and I hope you go on to make a few more and don't forget to join the making it monday facebook group uh, it's making it monday exclamation mark all these things are important when you're searching on facebook and uh join in and start posting your makes well, there we are that's that's the one we just made it's like quite cute really isn't it that's the uh, the original one that you've seen the photograph on and this is the the more sort of glamorous affair if you like I suppose it could be quite nice hanging from a tree for a Christmas tree. <laughs> oh gosh, here we go. That's the great thing about patterns is that you can adapt them to what you want them to be and what occasion they fit into. Um, but anyway, whatever you do, have fun. So um, that's me done for this week. And um, next week we've got one more Easter project for you. And then we'll, we'll move on from that just to make sure that you get enough time 
to make the projects if I did it right up to the day you you wouldn't have time so this week and next week is all about Easter and then we'll move on to well, we've got to move on to spring haven't we because we're just about there we're just about there which is fantastic so it's been lovely to see you all. Um, I didn't get to see all of your comments here on Facebook um, and I'm sure um, you, you've all uh, been talking to each other and uh, telling each other all your tips and tricks of what you do, perhaps when you're stitching elastic. Um, and now Suzanne says her niece is getting married in November. Was it November? Yes might make some for her favours. You see that's a good idea and actually they're a good size so you get lots of chocolates. <laughs> Or would you put sugared almonds in? I love that full of sugared almonds, please. My favourite. My teeth don't like them. Anyway, um, <laughs> have a lovely rest of your evening and um, I'll talk to you all again soon. Have a great, great week. Bye bye, everybody.